Yeah, thanks, Tim, and I appreciate the opportunity to present to everyone today, and thank you for taking the time uh, to join us. So um, today's presentation is really going to focus on a number of key developments that have occurred since my commencement on the 1st of August that I believe placed Magnus in a very strong position to take advantage of the opportunities presented by the global energy transition. So if we just move to the agenda on slide three, I'm aware of that many of you who have joined today are familiar with Magnus and its journey. But for those of you who may not be as familiar with Magnus, I'll commence with a short overview of the company, including our vision, the assets and strategic investments we hold, our unique positioning in the market and our focus on ESG. I'll then discuss the recently signed US Inflation Reduction Act and the benefits and opportunities that this provides for Magnus before moving on to uh, providing an update on the progress of the IM3 NY plant following my recent visit there. Finally, I'll briefly discuss the extra fast charging results from our technology partner C4V and conclude with an overview of our near term focus. So moving on to an overview of Magnus um, and our vision on slide four, we really are seeking to be a vertically integrated company that delivers high quality, high performing, safe and sustainable products across the lithium ion battery value chain. Our current areas of focus in this value chain are on the, uh, the, the graphite and the anode material sec sector, the battery technology, and of course the cell manufacturing. And slide five outlines our current portfolio of uh, assets and investments across that, across that battery value chain including the cell manufacturing facilities in New York, of which we own approximately 60%. And of course, in Townsville, which we own 33%. The investment in our battery technology partner, C4V, which is around about 10% investment value. And of course, our wholly owned 100% natural graphite project in Tanzania. So moving on to slide six, Magnus really presents a unique investment opportunity to in the Australian market, being the only ASX listed company with a lithium ion battery manufacturing asset that has moved into production, utilizing a battery technology that doesn't use any nickel or cobalt. That with, with some strong policy, social and regulatory uh, tailwinds in key markets an experienced and diverse uh, board and management team, access to the unique uh, battery technology IP and ownership of the high quality critical mineral asset in, in Nachu we're in a really strong position to capitalize on the growing global demand for electric vehicles and battery energy storage systems. An extremely important foundation of our business is our focus on ESG. And on slide seven, it really highlights where our focus is in meeting our sustainability commitments. In terms of the environment, we're really focused on producing some of the greenest and most sustainable products in the world. For example, our cell manufacturing plant in New York is predominantly powered by renewable energy, utilizes existing infrastructure. Uh, it also um, focuses on the um, other aspects of uh, revitalizing the community and also minimizing waste and focused on recycling of a lot of the products that come out of the actual process. From a social perspective, we're committed to making a positive impact in the communities that we operate. And this is no better demonstrated by the work that we've been doing in Tanzania as part of the Natu project to support improvements in housing, uh, in education, and also in skills development. So we think this is a really important aspect of every project we do. And that includes um, the IM3NY project, which is um, very, very focused on the revitalization of that particular community uh, following the exit of the IBM manufacturing uh, some time ago. On the board side, we have a very experienced and diverse board who has really broad sector experience across many different industries. And they are really focused on ensuring that, that we have the best practice, uh, governance systems, controls, processes, and policies in place, as well as working with management to guide the long-term future strategy of the company. So with that as a brief overview and introduction to Magnus, I'd now like to discuss the uh, recently signed US Inflation Reduction Act and the opportunities and benefits that provides for Magnus and its partners. This is a really important piece of legislation to accelerate decarbonisation and the overall energy transition and advance the manufacture of batteries and critical minerals in the US 
but also many other forms of clean energy technologies. So the key section of the act, which is um, of most relevance to Magnus is what's called section 45X. And this particular uh, section focuses on the uh, advanced manufacturing production tax credits across a range of different technologies. The most important section of this for Magnus is the battery cell tax credit, which is uh, $35 per unit of capacity of each cell, which is being provided under the act. Now, if we translate that into our recently announced uh, production target of one gigawatt hour by the end of 2023, that translates into a total tax credit of $35 million. Um, so as you can see, it's a very significant um, uh, tax credit that we would be receiving um, as part of that particular um, of this act. In addition to the direct tax credit that um, are provided to US uh, manufacturers, there's many other aspects of the act which really focus on the broader energy transition and the development of renewable energy sources such as wind and solar. And of course, due to the intermittency of the wind and solar, um, they heavily rely on battery energy storage systems to really even out the intermittency and to ensure um, the reliability, uh, stability and strength of the overall power system. So there's a real, um, you know, gonna be a real drive for battery energy storage systems um, in, in terms of meeting that overall energy transition. Moving on to slide nine, one of my first actions uh, when I started was to uh, head over to New York and to visit and inspect the IM3MY facility. Uh, I was fortunate enough to arrive just as final preparations were being made to commence commercial production. And it was really exciting to see the plant come to life while I was there. So I was, I was very, very, very fortunate to see that. I was really impressed by the size and scale of the facility. It's, it's you know, the size of uh, three football fields. It, it really is quite massive. Uh, the quality of the work that has been completed by the team and our delivery partners um, is, is, is you know, some of the best quality I've seen in my career. Uh, and what really impressed me the most was the safety focus of everyone um, involved in that final delivery and also the um, heading into operations. Um, these, these facilities, um, you know, you really need to focus on safety of, of people. You, you, you're working with, um, you know, cathode materials, anode materials. You've got moving machinery, um, and you know, the the focus on safety of the team was was something which I um, really took away as a positive from that particular trip. Uh, I'm looking forward to heading back over to the plant uh, shortly to support the team continue with the production ramp up um, and really um, heading towards those first sales going out to customers. Um, in, in the near term, and also sitting down with them and working through the next stages of the scale up plan, which will ultimately head us towards 38 gigawatt hours by, 20, by 2030. The next slide is, is really about our recent announcement regarding the results of our, our, the extra fast charging um, results, which has been carried out by our technology partner C4B. And what that really demonstrated um, was that there was only a 3% initial capital capacity loss, sorry, after more than 2,600 cycles of 20 minute charge and discharge. Um, so these results are really promising um, and provide a real product differentiator to the market to address um, what is uh, a key concern for many buyers of, uh, in the EV market um, about the time of, um, of recharge to you know, capacity. So uh, we see this as a real positive for us moving forward um, the test program is going to continue on um, and test, uh, see what the results are for 3,000 cycles. Um, and so that we're, we're really looking forward to those results. Uh, and then we're going to actually expand uh, the testing program into 10 minute charge discharge cycles and six minute charge discharge, discharge cycles as well. So um, we're really excited about this. Um, we, we think this is a, a really important differentiator um, that uh, really drives a lot of value for, for end customers and end users. Um, so that, that's, that's very exciting for us uh, going forward. Um, moving on to the near-term focus um, for Magnus, um, it's really from my perspective about generating value through focused execution and continuing to de-risk our portfolio uh, of assets. Um, so for IM3 New York, it's really about focusing on production ramp up um, and getting those sales out to customers and uh, focusing on finalizing those uh, scale up plans. Uh, IM3 continuing with their charging program um, and really focusing on product development uh, going forward. 
Uh, NACHU, uh, where we're certainly focused on finalizing the feasibility study, update to the feasibility study, and then really focus on moving into the, uh, the, fi the financing stage of that and, and heading towards uh, commencement of the, of the mine. Uh, and then the, the Townsville project, we're continuing to uh, um, hold discussions with a number of key stakeholders um, you know, to continue to prog uh, progress and move that project forward. Uh, Tim, I think that's probably close to time. So I'm um, um, happy to uh, uh, take any particular questions um, that may have been presented. Thanks there's, a lot. There's lots, there's lots of questions, David. There always is. There's a loyal, uh, there's a very loyal audience here. Yeah. Can, you, can you give us some more colour on um, production of the batteries? Have they been tested for quality and insurance? Yeah, so we've, uh, we've, got, we've got a number of um, cells that, that are currently in um, testing. Um, they've been through the, uh, the, the latest results were sort of 800 cycles um, of testing and, um, you know, the, the actual results of that have been uh, extremely promising um, and in line with our expectations. So, so that's really great. Um, and, you know, I think that's, it's, it's, it's proving that, um, you know, really proving that the, the process works um, and um, all of the technology and chemistry is all coming together. So really promising results from that perspective. And, and the expectations for revenue from IM3 New, New York is, is at the end of September, is, is that correct? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's really heading into that sort of uh, for the last quarter of this calendar year um, is when they'll start, start ramping up. Um, so, you know, we've got commitments that we have to make, um, but certainly, um, you know, those, those revenues will, um, will, will grow over time, obviously, as the production ramps up, but certainly in the, in the fourth quarter calendar of this year, absolutely. And, and how is early production progress? And given you, you're at the battery plant, you would have met with our analyst, Di Brookman, when yep. she was there with you. Yep. Can you give us some colour on how production is looking? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing process. It really is. Um, you know, the, the level of um, technology that's involved in, you know, manufacturing these particular cells and the quality control um, that really goes into the process is really quite amazing. Um, and... So the production process is, 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 you know, really there's always little tweaks to be made um, as you're kind of heading into that production. Um, but the, the guys are working through those um, issues um, and making sure that, you know, the, the product quality remains high. Um, so yeah, very, very happy with the production results at the moment. And, and is Magnus in the queue for government funding? Obviously the Biden Administration Inflation Act um, is ripe for someone like Magnus. Um, have you filed for some sort of grant application? Yeah, well, look, we've certainly been involved in making applications. It's been a, an ongoing and long process um, in, in, in engagement with the Department of Energy. Um, we do feel very well positioned um, to be able to um, secure some of that funding. Um, you know, hopefully um, we'll, we'll hear, you know, talk, you know soon in, in, the, in the next sort of uh, few months as to where how, how our application is progressing. But... We are certainly uh, have a number of different um, avenues under, under those various programs for funding from the Department of Energy. And, and just on funding, um, can you give us uh, a level, what sort of interest you're getting from an off-take agreement perspective? Is the phone running off the hook? How, how's that unfolding? I appreciate you can't tell us anything specifically. Yeah, um, yeah, we obviously can't name names or anything, but yeah, you, you're right. Um, I think the recent announcement of, of commercial production, we've had a number of inbound inquiries from people um, looking to wanting to uh, find more, find out more about the actual cell technology. Um, you know, what's our sort of capacity availability, um, and that's from a range of um, a range of different markets and customers that we're talking to. So, a really positive response uh, from a demand perspective. And and we're getting lots of questions in here, but they do centre around some core questions, which is Nachu. Where where are we at with the feasibility? What's been the cause of the delay? Um, when will that graphite end up in IM3 New York and, and the battery factory there? Yeah, it's a good question. Thank you. Um, you know, it's we've been kind of like everyone. We've we've been you know subject to some uh, uh, supply constraints on the resource side, um, just from an engineering perspective. Um, you know, having come from that world previous to um, you know, joining Magnus, uh, I'm well aware of the acute shortages. Um, in some of those resources. So that slowed us down slightly, um, not, not, not too much, but it did slow us down. Um, we, we, are, we are in the, in the midst of finalising um, all aspects of that feasibility study right now. Um, so, you know, we do expect that that will be uh, released um, very soon. Um, 
So that's where we're at with that particular one. In terms of um, you know, where we're heading and, and production of graphite, um, look, we've got a, a financing process to go through. Um, you know, that'll take some time um, in the current environment. Um, and then we've got a, effectively a two year development program um, to get the mine up and running into operation. So, um, you know, financing first, get all the funding in place and locked away uh, and, then, and then into delivery phases. So there's still, still a bit of time before we get, in, get into that. And, and David, let's, let's finish on a couple of questions, if you don't mind. I mean, you're new to the business. What, yep. what attracted you to the, to the company? And, and Magnus is kind of, there's, there's a lack of institutional shareholders on the, on the register. How can you encourage or, or what, are, what are institutions looking for at the next stage for Magnus before they become investors? Yeah, sure. So um, look, the, the company, from my perspective, um, I have a real passion for uh, the green energy sector um, and, and, you know, this um, looking at uh, green technologies and advancing, um, effectively making a positive contribution um, to the community and the environment through what we do every day. Um, I thought that uh, Magnus had, you know, built a great platform um, of, of assets and investments um, across the value chain within that space. And, you know, it was a really, from my perspective, a great opportunity um, to take a company from where it is and, and you know, achieve some significant growth um, over the next five years uh, in this sector. So that was a, a real, real uh, attraction from my perspective. Uh, in terms of institutional investors and attracting in institutional investors, um, I believe that they're looking for, you know, some, some real uh, proof of uh, execution and, and, and milestones, um, you know, seeing some revenues coming through. Um, so, you know, we're really focused on that at the moment. Uh, and I think, you know, they'll, they'll see the story. I think we're in the right space that people are looking to invest in. Um, and as we're actually proving um, that we're hitting our milestones, we're delivering um, and we're executing um, with excellence, then I think that will really attract those institutional investors into the company. David, thanks for your time. It really is a fascinating story, potentially the right place at the right time. Uh, we'll catch up with you again later in the year. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, everyone.